um, then you will have those resources available to you after the session. But real quickly, can you all share my, see my PowerPoint? Awesome. Okay. So if you have or are an incoming high school student, the application process is very simple. You apply online through the Apply Texas application, which I'm sure you've heard about and are familiar with. You'll submit your official high school transcript. Um, if you have SAT or ACT scores, we would love to see those. If you do not, that is fine because we are test optional for both 2021 and 2022 because of COVID. You will not be penalized for not having those. It just does give us more information with which to make an admission decision. There is an admission essay that you can submit through Apply Texas. You do not have to submit it at the same time that you apply. You can go back and submit it afterwards, but there is an, app or an essay that you'll need to do. Make sure you've got someone or, um, you know, if you're a counselor, that you proofread those essays because, you know, we want to make sure that students can write well, clearly, cl uh, concisely, get their point across um, with correct grammar. And then there is no application fee. So we charge no application fee at UTRGV, and I know those can get pretty hefty. So um, that's something exciting that we're able to offer our students. I know we've got some of our transfer counselors on here. Ms. Bermejo, I saw you pop on. Um, so for our transfer students, you're going to apply online at Apply Texas also. Submit official transcripts from every college or university that the student has attended. Even if they've transferred all their credits to one school, we still need all of those transcripts um, to make sure the students are in good financial and academic standing at all their previous institutions. We're going to, um, we're not going to charge an application fee again for transfer students and they actually do not have to um, submit the essay. So for incoming freshmen, they do have an essay for transfers, they do not. I've got what, how we um, admit our transfer students up here. So if students have an associate's degree, they're guaranteed admission. If they have more than 24 transferable hours then in a 2.0 GPA, then we will admit them. If students have less than 24 transferable hours, then we will want to see that high school transcript and test score if they have it. Um, so for freshmen, we do holistic review. So every freshman student is looked at holistically. For transfer students, we kind of do the same thing, but we do have a set of admissions criteria that we will hold them to. If they meet those requirements, we'll automatically accept them. For financial aid, um, a really important deadline that's coming up here in a few weeks is tuition advantage. So our tuition advantage program covers tuition and mandatory fees for students who meet certain academic criteria and um, who have a household income of $95,000 a year or less. So if you've got students um, that meet those criteria, I would highly encourage them to get their application and their FAFSA completed ASAP so that they can potentially qualify for tuition advantage. The academic requirements for tuition advantage are different based on freshman transfer continuing students. So you can go to utrgv.edu backslash tuition advantage to review those requirements. We do charge flat rate tuition. So once students are enrolled in at least 12 hours, they pay the same flat rate. Our in-state tuition is about $9,000 for the year. So that's what they pay, whether they take 12, 15, 18 hours, they're just paying that flat rate. Our tuition is also guaranteed. So once a student is enrolled at UTRGV, we are not going to increase their tuition for the next four years as long as they stay enrolled. Um, and we award over, over a quarter of a billion dollars in financial aid annually. We actually have the largest allocation of grant funds out of any Texas university. So we have a lot of money to pass along to our students. Okay, I see there's a question to high school students with more than 24 hours dual credit or AP. No, they are still considered a freshman for scholarship purposes, financial aid purposes, housing. Um, now we will classify them academically appropriately. They might be a sophomore or a junior, but we're still going to treat them as a freshman as far as awarding is concerned. So they still need to fill out the freshman application. I'm glad you asked that question, Ms. Martinez. That's a good one. Um, okay, one more slide. So the admitted student checklist. So now we're kind of in that area where we've got a lot of students still applying, but we also have a lot of admitted students. So if you have students that have already been admitted, the first and most important thing they need to do is activate their UTRGV email account. Um, I have a checklist with a link 
that tells them how to do that. So if they're having problems, they can reach out to one of us and we can walk them through that process because that's how they're going to log into everything from here on out. And that's how the university is primarily going to communicate with them. Um, we will be opening up registration for new student orientation in March. So students just need to be on the lookout on their email at, uh, at their email to see when that registration opens up. If students have any dual credit or AP courses, we wanna see those transcripts or test scores because obviously when we advise them, we need to know what they already have credit for. So as soon as they can get that information to us, the better. If the students are not exempt from TSI based on test scores or dual credit, then they're going to need to provide us the TSI assessment score. So that has not been waived. We still have to have those TSI assessment scores. Um, if the student is 22 years or younger, we'll need proof of meningitis vaccination. So that doesn't need to be submitted for admission, but we do need it again before they can actually start taking classes here. Um, if you haven't already applied for financial aid, scholarships, or housing, make sure you do that. Our out-of-area students that are not in Hidalgo, Cameron, Willacy, or Star County do have to live on campus their freshman year. The housing application is up and running. It just opened this week, so we're very excited about that. Um, make sure students are logging in to assist to check their financial aid and scholarship awards. We don't want them to miss out on an acceptance deadline, so make sure they're logging in to check that. Uh, make their housing arrangements, and then when students have completed their semester or graduated, we need that final official transcript. We do have an online um, system where students can submit documents, and I'm going to put that website into the chat. So they can submit things electronically. And if they submit documents electronically, they can actually go back into Document Central to see any notes about that document. So whether it was, if it was accepted or not, if there's any issues, it'll be listed there. Um, okay, uh, there was a question that I missed. We can I, can I say some things about TSI? Please do. I was so not students, um, and we will cover this. If you guys have questions about the TSI 2, please sign up for our February briefing. We will be going over orientation and TSI and everything your admitted students need to know. So those are happening uh, next week, we will send you the link. The I'll include week. those links in the Yeah, in the so we email. will cover all the TSI, but yes, they do now indicate which schools they would like their score sent to, so they can put UTRGV, and that will definitely help us get their scores. Um, and if you have students who are not going to be able to test, please let us know. Um, again, come to our briefing next week so that we can go over all orientation TSI issues going into the fall. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we still are offering one-on-one -on -one, uh, or uh, in-person campus tours. So students can come, there is a limited capacity, but we are offering in-person tours on both campuses. We're also doing live virtual tours. So if they're not able to get down here, they're not comfortable being on campus, they can take a tour. It's not just a video. We will have one of our V-Squad members that's engaging with them and walking them through campus and answering their questions. So uh, they can, in, we do have recruitment events coming up as well. I just wanted to point out the campus tour, but you can sign up for all of this if you go to utrgv.edu slash recruitment events. Okay, so I have my email up there. If I am your representative, you can email me. If I'm not your representative, you can see who your rep is by going to utrgv.edu slash find my recruiter and clicking on your area of the state of Texas. So now um, I will be around and I will be answering questions in the chat if you have questions specifically about the application or recruitment. Um, but now I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Singh to talk about hospitality and tourism management. Well, thank you, Andy. Um, and uh, for those who might've uh, joined a little late, I'll just go ahead and uh, reintroduce myself. So I'm, uh, and, uh, I'm AJ Singh. Uh, the founding director of the new Hospitality and Tourism Management Program, which is the latest addition to the majors in the College of Business. And um, I was originally at uh, Michigan State University for 25 years, and uh, my wife and I moved down here to start this exciting new program. So, um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, engaging with all of you today. Uh, I'd like to share a brief presentation about the program and what we've been doing so far. 
and then after that, uh, uh, um, hopefully open up to, to questions. Um, as some of you, um, for all of you, I know have traveled, uh, uh, you know, stayed in hotels, eaten in restaurants, um, and, and uh, uh, you know, left home. But uh, 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 this industry is so uh, broad and large, uh, a lot of times people don't think about it as a business. You know, we've all interacted with hospitality and tourism as consumers, uh, but uh, over the years, uh, it really has uh, grown into a, a very large global industry. And, and so I was very excited that the University of Texas uh, Rio Grande Valley has uh, included that as part of the, uh, the new program. Um, uh, just so that you know, the UTRGV's Hospitality and Tourism Program is actually the only one in the UT system. So um, there's no other UT that actually has hospitality and, and uh, tourism ma uh, management. So with that, maybe we can go to the next slide. And so one of the things that we have done because this industry is so large uh, and uh, you know, when I was at Michigan State, uh, the program there was over 90 years old. So, so really uh, there's a lot of hospitality programs out there. So it was very important for us to not just only offer a, a business degree in hospitality and tourism, but also think in terms of um, specific careers that students uh, um, you know, would do well in. So, so the, the degree is gonna be built on the basic uh, business foundation courses, but as they go through the program, we actually have four concentration areas. So the students can select and we can kind of click on these boxes, uh, which start to populate and show which are the, the concentrations. So um, the, the industry really has a variety of different uh, sectors, but some of the larger ones include, of course, lodging. In the United States, there's over 5 million hotel rooms. And even if somebody would have just focus only on the hotel sector, you can actually make a really, really good career just in the lodging lodging sector, all the way from, you know, resorts to five-star hotels to um, uh, city hotels to convention hotels. Uh, you know, if you like to work in uh, small uh, boutique-style hotels, so there's a variety of different uh, choices just within the uh, the lodging sector itself. So that's one of the concentrations for those who have an interest in in that area. The other area is, of course, they, we put up restaurant, but it's really the broader area of food and beverage. So if you really think in terms of the number of food outlets out there uh, naturally and globally, it, it's, it's huge. Uh, you know, it's not just restaurants, but it's also uh, catering services, you know, banquet services, uh, airline catering, uh, contract services, clubs, all of these uh, a form of the, the food and beverage sector. So there's a lot of students who have an interest in the culinary side. And so, so managing that uh, aspect is, is going to be important as well. Uh, the third um, uh, aspect is event and destination management. So if you think in terms of you know, uh, major destinations, whether it's a, a city or a country, uh, you need people to actually promote those destinations. You know, you need marketing people. So there's a, a, a variety of careers just in destination management. And then of course, specifically on event management. Uh, you know, if you think in terms of Orlando and you think in terms of Chicago and New York and um, uh, Vegas, these are huge event destinations. And there's a lot of career choices for people who want to work in the event space, whether it's social events or commercial events or incentive travel. Uh, so, uh, so huge opportunities there. And the fourth one that we are particularly excited about, because this is really going to be the first one uh, within um, a hospitality program, is this nexus between hospitality and healthcare. So we've also introduced a concentration in healthcare hospitality. You know, when you think about a hospital, you know, nobody really likes to check into a hospital, but, you know, uh, at some point involuntarily, you may have to. And so uh, a lot of the hospitals are now looking at the hospitality sector to create an experience for the patient. So it's not just about the medical treatment, but it's also about, you know, how uh, the patient feels when they're in 
uh, a hospital. And so uh, some of the hospitals are now leaning to hospitality companies and hospitality executives to create this uh, experience. And so I think there's a, there's a, a really good opportunity for us to, to uh, position ourselves in the, uh, the, the healthcare sector. So again, like I said, um, you know, the, the, there's so many hospitality programs out there. It's very important now for uh, new programs, not just to offer a general degree, but the strength of our degree is it's going to be a very strong business foundation. But in addition to that, students are able to then concentrate on specific skills associated with a particular sector, whether it's hotels or food and beverage or event destination, or in our case, uh, uh, also the new, new uh, one of healthcare hospitality. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Um, these, uh, this slide may be a little um, uh, small to see, but you know, uh, Andy, I think you can share it with the counselors, but this sort of just gives you the, the types of careers that you can actually make within each of these sectors. So you know, whether it's lodging or food and beverage or healthcare or event, there's a variety of different things that you can, you can do. So, I mean, I'll just pick um, lodging. You know, I, I, I spent a lot of my uh, um, uh, working life before I got into academics in the lodging sector. And if you really think in terms of somebody who wants to get into lodging, the, the bigger choices are, of course, somebody who wants to become a general manager of a hotel, you know, whether it's a small hotel or a mid-sized hotel or a large hotel. But even within the lodging sector, somebody who might be interested, let's say, in just marketing or somebody who's interested in just in human resources, or somebody who's interested just in accounting or finance, even within the lodging uh, sector, you can actually opt out to not just run a hotel, but also specialize and use your business degree to, to have a particular skill and a career within that itself. But within uh, lodging, and that's the area that I focus my research on, there's also a very exciting and lucrative and high paying uh, career choice in lodging investments. So if you think in terms of, um, uh, all the hotels out there, you know, they're investors who are investing in hotels uh, and they need specialized companies to actually do the analysis on where to build the hotel, uh, how to finance the hotel, uh, you know, generate value. So there's a lot of uh, uh, specialized companies that can hire our students uh, to get into asset management, hotel consulting, uh, mortgage banking, uh, uh, investment banking that's that uh, are specifically focused on the lodging sector. So at Michigan State University, uh, I was actually the director of the real estate investment management uh, uh, specialization, which uh, is part of the hospitality program, but again, a niche sector. So again, uh, as you can see, uh, within our concentration, there's a variety of different choices uh, that uh, students can take. And again, as counselors, you know, when students come to you, um, you know, the first thing uh, I would suggest you you ask them is, you know, uh, a little bit about their personality. You know, what is it that they like? Because the beauty of the hospitality industry is that it really offers many, many choices to fit a variety of different skill sets, different uh, personality types. Uh, and so, um, so this kind of gives you a little uh, landscape overview of some of the careers that you can get into. We can go to the next one. Um, as the program is new, uh, this just kind of gives you a little uh, sampler of the type of classes that the students would take. So initially when they uh, are enrolled in the program, of course, they're going to take a lot of basic business classes, you know, accounting and finance and marketing. But in addition to that, there's some basic hospitality classes. So for example, uh, the introduction to hospitality and tourism is a really good class to start with because it starts to give them a landscape overview of what this industry is all about. So it helps them kind of decide. The other introductory class is introduction to food, where we have a teaching chef who not only teaches you the fundamentals of food preparation, but you're also actually uh, um, preparing food. Uh, and then as you uh, get into some of the more advanced classes, as you can see, uh, you start to specialize in specific aspects of hospitality, such as hospitality law, or hospitality finance, or hospitality uh, marketing. Uh, uh, and, and, and that sort of progresses you as you get into the, the concentration. A very important part of our program is um, the internship. 
because all hospitality recruiters are looking for students who've got some uh, work experience. And so, so we have a required 600 hour uh, work, work uh, uh, experience uh, internship. And so we help obviously the students get into uh, uh, an internship of their choice. And so that's something that we do a one-on-one -on -one counseling with if they you know, express to us what their interests are, whether it's hotels or it's food and beverage or something else we help them kind of get that, that uh, internship. And even within the internship, it's not just about them working the front line. What we have is actually partnerships with various and those, and we, we work with them to uh, give the students a rotational exposure through their company. So not only are they working a particular job, but they're also job shadowing uh, managers and sort of learning uh, about the business of that particular enterprise that they're, they're uh, uh, working in. Um, I'm not sure if I have a slide on this, but uh, at this point, I also wanted to uh, let you know that we're uh, very close to finalizing a very exciting project at UTRGV, where we're going to actually have a teaching hotel uh, on campus and a hospitality school building uh, attached to that. And again, that sort of uh, uh, links with what I just said about this practical experience because recruiters more and more are looking for students, not just with a classroom knowledge, but do these people have the necessary knowledge and skills and attributes to be able to start working right away. And so having a teaching hotel, uh, uh, which will be a full service hotel uh, attached to a hospitality school building is really gonna make our students uh, uh, very strong. So we're in the midst uh, with working on that. The site has been selected. Uh, we're working on actually identifying a management company and a brand that will actually be part of that hotel. And um, you know, uh, if all goes well, we should have a hotel, uh, that teaching hotel uh, um, by 2022, uh, where we'll start to get that. So that's something very, ex very exciting. Uh, let's see, I think we can uh, move on to the next slide. Uh, one of the things I um, tell our students, uh, and you know, we use this presentation also um, uh, with our advisors, is that uh, in addition to um, uh, just taking classes, we really encourage our students to get very involved with student organizations. Because again, uh, you know, I, I think of um, I think of our students going through our process, but ultimately we're really trying to position them for success. We want them to be the best students that uh, our recruiters can get. And so uh, uh, from my experience, I know that uh, um, recruiters are always looking to see what kind of leadership and management uh, skills that our students have developed. And we find that when students get involved with uh, different uh, student organizations, and specifically in our case, hospitality student organizations, uh, they develop some of these skills. And so because this industry is so large, uh, a lot of organizations actually focus on specific industry types. So there's the Club Managers Association of America. And so those who have an interest in clubs, we encourage them to kind of get involved with that. You know, those who might have an interest in real estate, you know, there's clubs associated with that. Or if you uh, are interested in food or wine, you know, there are clubs associated with that. So obviously we don't have all these clubs on campus because we're, we're very new but we have actually formed a student organization. And that's, I think, the next slide. Uh, we can go to the next slide. And so, so we did, the students did form a, a hospitality student club. And I'm happy to say they've been very engaged, very active, and we take them to a variety of different conferences uh, throughout the country. They've participated in student activities, uh, including student competitions. Uh, we invite a lot of guest speakers uh, to these club activities. Uh, they're engaged with a, uh, a, uh, a, a local restaurant where there's a, a farm to table concepts, so they get involved with that. So these are the types of things that we're trying to do with our students. So not only are they learning this classroom skills, but we're also kind of getting them engaged with a lot of leadership type activities. Uh, and so when they graduate, um, you know, they have that, that sense of confidence and know a lot more about the industry. I think we can go to the next slide. 
Um, so again, like I said, my goal is obviously to recruit uh, good students, you know, put them through a very rigorous curriculum. Uh, but at the same time, ultimately we, we want them placed. So my job as the new director now is to start to form partnerships. And I'm happy to say that we started to form very strong partnerships with a lot of major hotel companies um, uh, in, in the US. Uh, and so we've invited them to come to campus. They come and speak in our classes and slowly as the program is, is, uh, 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 is uh, getting known, uh, you know, we're starting to get, generate interest in a lot of these companies that are coming. And as you can see from the slide, you know, we've got Hilton and uh, Hyatt and Marriott. Uh, uh, there's a whole host of choices. I mean, students who don't want to work in, in hotels, I mean, there's suppliers that are, that are pro providing supplies to the hospitality industry, whether it's Gordon Food Service or Ecolab or Cisco or technology companies. Uh, these are support companies that also look to hospitality students uh, 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 to hire. So, uh, so I'm excited right now. We're sort of developing these partnerships and, uh, and, and as we develop the program, we'll have a lot more uh, stories to share with you. Um, so as most of the students who are in our program are young, uh, they're not really sure, you know, what direction they want to go in, uh, uh, a signature feature uh, of our program is to have a, a series of guest speakers uh, through a distinguished lecture series where they come in and actually um, uh, talk about their career successes. So uh, the next couple of slides just kind of give you a sampling of the types of people we've had and we continue to have every semester in class because ultimately what we really want is for students to start to see role models and start to see where they can go with with uh, their career. So, you know, Juan Corvinos, you know, he's vice president of development for Hilton in Latin America. Uh, he's originally from Spain. Uh, you know, worked with uh, Hilton in the U.S. and now he oversees uh, Latin American uh, uh, operations. You know, Ms. Kampf, you know, started off with McDonald's in a store. Uh, and when she talks to our students, she talks about now how she manages a variety of different uh, uh, McDonald's in Southern California. So, uh, so these are the types of stories that we actually share with our students. So I think next couple of slides probably just give you some more examples of the types of uh, senior executives and managers we've had in class. We could go to the next slide. So we've had uh, Mr. Javier Cano, who runs a very successful five-star hotel in um, Los Angeles. You know, Susan Santiago is with Hyatt. Uh, Mr. Suarez, um, you know, runs a variety of resorts in Puerto Rico. And so, so the idea is, you know, students not start to see, you know, what's, what these folks are doing out there and what kind of choices they have. Uh, one of the other things that we're doing with our program is we're attaching each of our students to a mentor. And so what these mentors will do, given the student's interest, is uh, uh, discuss with them, you know, their career choices. And so ideally, what we really want is a two-way communication between the mentor and the mentee. And basically, uh, they're guiding them through the process. You're helping them in internships, they're helping them in resumes, they're helping them obviously with final placements. So we're not quite there because the program is brand new, but uh, we start to get these uh, uh, industry leaders engaged with our program through an advisory board, through uh, coming to class, and then through this uh, mentor-mentee relationship. So I think that's gonna be something that's gonna be very powerful as part of our program. Let me go to the next slide. And so this uh, uh, kind of sums it up a little bit. Uh, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, at the high school level are not sure about what the hospitality and tourism industry is all about. You know, they would know what marketing is as a business major. They know what accounting is. They know what finance is. They know what management is. But this slide kind of gives you an idea that, you know, travel and tourism as an industry uh, is made up of multiple businesses. And these slides kind of show you those multiple businesses that our students will be managing. So going back to what I originally said, you know, the strength of our program is there we're in the college of business, the students are gonna get a very strong foundation in, in business. And then specifically, we're gonna introduce them to a segment, a growing segment, the travel and tourism industry. As you can see from the slide, there's 
any aspect that they can focus on, uh, whether it's lodging or transportation or food and beverage or retail or other entertainment activities. And each one of these is a business and, and our students are gonna be really well prepared when they graduate uh, to run these businesses as managers, operators, and hopefully at some point, even owners and entrepreneurs in, in, um, in these businesses. And I think that should be the end of the presentation. I'm happy to take any questions from the counselors. So I see a question from uh, Lisa about uh, um, articulation agreement. So absolutely. And that's, I think, something that's uh, handled more at uh, uh, Andrea's level in terms of articulation agreements. So those are certainly things that we, we would love to have uh, formulated. At this point, uh, we really don't have anything specifically with hospitality, but Andrea, I think we have it more so with the College of Business, correct? I can answer, I guess. I didn't know if Andy was about to say something. I didn't want to interrupt. So with Del Mar, I think Crystal is on here. So make sure um, if you don't know Crystal, you get to know Crystal um, from Del Mar, for Del Mar. She is a recruiter that works with students from that area. And um, the gui a guided pathway, we do not have a transfer guide for Del Mar at the moment, um, but she can work with your students on um, which courses to take and how to transfer over. I don't know if there's another answer you wanted to give there, Andy. So we are, and I, I've got some people on here that I know are going to hold me to this. So Terrell Shaw and Sandra Bermejo, give me some grace on this because it's going to take a while, but we are working to create um, transfer plans. So for um, all of our top community college theaters, and then also one that covers the Texas Common Course numbering system. So even um, you know, if you're one of our community colleges that we don't have a ton of students that transfer you to be, but we're working on building that, um, we will have one that just goes over the common courses that they can take at the community college that will transfer into each major at UTRGV. So we're starting out with um, our top majors and we will work from there um, to create transfer plans that help you advise your students. So those are coming, but that is a large project and it takes time to develop. So we're just getting started, but be on the lookout for those. And we will definitely let you know as we create those where you can find them online. So and Terrell and recruiters and yeah, can, can definitely handle this on a one-on-one -on -one basis, especially um, if you're for, I, I'm sorry, I don't know everyone who's on right now, but um, any of our transfer partners, your outreach rep can deal with a student one-on-one -on -one for sure very easily. Any other questions about recruitment in general, specifically about hospitality and tourism management? We've still got six minutes, so we don't wanna you know, go over our time, but we're happy to answer any questions. And thank you, Terrell. <laughs> As the recruiters are thinking of uh, questions, may I ask a question to the uh, counselors? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're a new program and, you know, the purpose of today's uh, presentation was obviously to create awareness. Uh, but I'm just curious, um, at the high school level, has there been interest in, in hospitality and tourism? Are they aware of hospitality and tourism as a career? Um, I'm, I'm just curious because, you know, program is new and my, my, my goal is to work through UTRGV's uh, recruitment office to create that awareness. So I'm just curious where we are with, with uh, just this awareness at high school levels. How, how aware, not very aware. Okay. Uh, uh, good morning. From uh, Sherry Land, we did start with the first um, cohort of students in the Principles of Hospitality. Okay. So we are uh, implementing that program. This was our first year. So we are growing into the second course for, for next school year. So it's something that um, 
our kids are becoming more aware of. So that was my, my question on the chat, like if you would be open to providing presentations to high school students, because the majority of our kids are freshmen right now, because that was the freshman good. introductory course, but it's definitely something that we're growing into. Absolutely. Thank you, Corina. And in fact, that's really 80% uh, of my work right now is really trying to reach out to all the feeder sources. So to the extent that we can make these presentations, you know, virtually in class, uh, that's what really my, my role is right now. And so, uh, so to the extent you can help us with that uh, information, we have all the information. Uh, our, our students who are in the club are very active. Uh, they're very keen to talk to uh, students about their experiences with the program. And so we can certainly create a variety of different uh, interactive things, including inviting some of your students to even come and audit some of the introductory classes. If they, sh you know, since everything's online right now, um, you know, we'd we'd be uh, happy to invite you know select students uh, from from your your institutions to come and just you know listen to guest speakers and things like that. So, if y'all will start with your outreach rep, um, and even if you wanted to copy me. That would be very, very helpful so that we can make sure we coordinate um, appropriately with Dr. Singh um, and we, we can um, help you guys uh, get this information to your students. Absolutely. The other thing I, I overlooked to mention, and I probably should have had a slide on that, uh, we have now introduced uh, a 100% online degree in hospitality and tourism management. So, so uh, I actually overlooked to put that slide, but uh, students who are, let's say, non-traditional students who have constraints about actually attending physical classes, they do have now the option of getting their degree in hospitality and tourism 100% online. And we do have a website that's already been set up for that. So that's something I think, uh, Andy, I can share with you. Uh, it's through Colt. And so... So if that's something that, you know, we want to send to the counselors. Uh, yeah, I have a list of everything that I'm going to send them when I send them their thank you emails. So if you want okay. to absolutely include it. And just to reiterate what Andrea said, I see a lot of people talk um, in the chat talking about virtual visits and presentations. And we are absolutely 100% willing and excited to talk to your students Virtually, um, even if there's not necessarily a great time for us to get into the classroom, we will set up evening presentations specifically for your students at your school um, and market it to them. And you know, then we can just have like a small group conversation and give them lots of time to answer questions. You know, we didn't get to get into schools this year, and I don't think we're going to be able to get into schools this year. So we are anxious for any opportunity we have to talk with your students about opportunities at UTRGV. Even if you're wanting to hear specifically from hospitality and tourism management, and we can't coordinate something with Dr. Singh, we now have this presentation recorded, and you know we can go over that with them. We would love to reach out to your students. So if you think that this information would be helpful for them, like Andrew, please reach out to us. Please contact your recruiter, or um, you know use the website. Contact. Sorry, me. <laughs> hmm. Oh, sorry. I thought someone was talking. Any other questions? Concerns, thoughts? Dr. Singh, do you have anything you want to add? No, we, we, uh, I really do appreciate this opportunity that uh, you folks have provided for me to kind of get in front of the counselors. And we really want to do more and more of that. Uh, that most of my time right now is dedicated to just building the program. So any opportunity we have, to get myself, our students in front of uh, uh, your students. Uh, we're more than more than happy to do that. Uh, and we're hoping that, you know, this vaccine rolls out fast so people can start to travel again. As you know, our industry has been hurting for a while, uh, but, uh, you know, usually what happens, you know, whenever there's a uh, issue like this, the industry comes out much, much stronger. So, so every conference, virtual conference or webinar I've been, 